Hey, this is Heretic, and in this video, we're going to go over KVK strategies, um, some tips, and, and just basic give a basic guide to beginners and advanced players. Basically, anyone who plays the game, hopefully, will get something out of this. Um, let's start with the basics. What is KVK? KVK, or Excalibur Invasion, is an event where multiple kingdoms, usually three to five, uh, compete both to hold and to take kingdoms. The battles all occur within the center forest grid of each kingdom and can go on for 24 hours or until the thrones have been won and held for a con consecutive eight hours. If the 24 hours ends and there's a throne that hasn't been taken, what they do is they take whoever has held it the longest, right, wins that throne. So you can find the Excalibur Invasion event in the Event Center, right, um, here. And when you click into here, you can actually see which kingdoms are participating. Um, you don't actually see the kingdoms for your next event until the moment it begins. Um, in the past, you could you knew you know days in advance um, who you were going to be competing against. And that gave time for people to reach out to the other kingdoms and come up with deals. And in the end, people weren't fighting each other. So KOA has made it to where the moment the ev event begins is when the pairing um, is displayed for you, right? So why do we do KVK, you know, why do we go through the trouble and lose troops and we have to spend a lot of time organizing and getting the kingdom together to to do this? Um, other than just the rewards and the bragging rights, um, KVK is the essential goal of the game. The game's not named King of Netherfall or King of the Dominion Castles, it's King of Avalon which is thrown at the center of, center of every um, map, right? So here I am, the very center of every map, you'll see an island with a throne on it. That is Avalon, right? That's, that's where um, the throne is. So when I say, you know, who controls the throne for, for eight hours consecutive or the longest, and your pairing, it's this right here, right? So when the event begins, you can send troops here, and whoever holds this the longer, the longest, wins. So when does it happen? So KVK is an event that occurs every two weeks. Um, it begins. And for, for the U.S. or the Americas, it begins very early in the morning, like extremely early in the morning, um, which is the evening in Asia um, and is afternoon in Europe. Um, for me personally, I'm in, in central time zone, so it begins at 5 o'clock in the morning, which means I have to wake up around 4.30, um, get my coffee, log in, get everything set up to begin, right? So extremely early. Um, so I mentioned uh, opponent pairing. So let's go over to the event again. And in here you can see the three kingdoms that are in my pairing. I've seen up to five kingdoms um, in a single pairing. Um, for, the, for the last few ones that we've had, it's always been three. And you can see that I'm paired against uh, kingdom 25, 209 and more 759, right? So it's a very complicated and a little controversial um, the way that the pairing actually occurs. They don't tell you. So we have to kind of infer uh, how the pairing, um, you know, what it takes into account. Uh, it's generally assumed that, you know, the win-loss record of a kingdom um, plays into it. Uh, so the way to think about it is there's three kingdoms here, right? So there's three potential points. If you don't win any, 
like 209 here didn't win any, right? They get zero points. 25 kept their own kingdom. They get one point. 759 got two points. That raises us up so that we compete against other kingdoms with the same total number of points over a certain amount of time. This is all inferred. KOA is not giving me this information. Um, another thing that people believe um, is that kingdom spending, like the overall spending for your kingdom, is accounted for. So if you have a lot of people spending a lot of money, then it looks at other kingdoms that are spending the equivalent amount over the last two weeks, the last four weeks, or whatever it is. Another is the overall power. So you compare, you know, 500 million power or 500 billion or whatever it is to 500 billion and you kind of come up with the ranges that it uh, that people fit into another one may be tiers so we haven't faced any 44s or 45s we haven't faced any tier 13s yet and i really hope we don't and i'll you know for a while because there's no one on our server you know very close to it um, but i believe that 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 is also accounted for. Uh, and there's probably other things. So all of these, you know, combination, I don't know what the weights are. Some people say even the total um, damage that uh, a kingdom uh, does to the golem every week is included. I don't know. Some people say no. Um, I'm, I'm sure the range is, is pretty wide because we've faced kingdoms that we just kind of blow away and we've also faced kingdoms that while everybody has similar stats to us there's, you know, 50 level 40s and their total number of troops make it kind of impossible for us to do it where we only have 10 right, so it just kind of the luck of the draw I think um, uh, how about awards? So there's there's different kinds of rewards um, for the for KVK. Um, there's the individual, which are here. These are pretty easy to get, um, at, at least down to the fifteen million one here. It's pretty easy to get. You can, basically, you just get into a tower or into Avalon to hold it. You stay there for the duration, and you you're, you max out on points around here. Uh, to get the other ones, you're actually going to have to kill troops. So you're going to have to participate in a mega rally, or um, sometimes uh, kingdoms will trade points. So they'll send someone to the uh, forest, and they'll kind of fight it out with somebody else. Yeah. Maybe even, you know, tiles. I've seen in the past. I'm not sure if you can do that anymore in Dominion. I, I didn't really get into that. Um, right, so this this last event, I did a lot of fighting. So there were a lot of points involved there. So I easily maxed out um, the rewards. Yeah, If your kingdom is able to hold your own throne, or if you're able to hold your throne plus another kingdom, or both other kingdoms. Um, whoever is appointed the king or queen is able to distribute packages to anyone in the kingdom, whether or not they participated. The more thrones your kingdom is able to take in a single event, the more rewards will be available to distribute. In addition, the same goes for what they call taxes, which are resources a winning kingdom, winning kingdom collects on a given schedule. Uh, the more thrones you occupy after an event, the more resources your king, king or queen will have to distribute. They, it doesn't really take anything away from the, the kingdoms that lose. It just basically gives you more um, to use. And I'm going to show you a little bit what that looks like. Um, so... So here's the taxes, right? These will uh, accumulate over over the two week period. The more kingdoms you own, the higher, the more resources you have to give away. You can actually allocate these to anyone in the kingdom. The king can 
can click on someone and allocate all the iron or all the sil silver or whatever to uh, to help them grow or recover from from the battle. In addition, you have these royal packages. Um, the more again, the more kingdoms you take, the more thrones you own at the end, the more packs you have to distribute. So we have two. This gave us two conqueror packs, which are amazing, right? 150 royal um, emblems and uh, 10k gold and all of this. Um, the defender pack, which if you have one kingdom, you get five. If you have two, you get 10 to distribute here. Um, and then the support pack, where normally you would get 15. In this case, we got 30 because we have two kingdoms, right? You can also, as anybody, you can go in and look and see, you know, who got the, each of the, um, the packages, right? Also, only if you win, and you only get these if you win, right? If you lose, you don't get any packages. Um, if you win, the king can also, the king or the queen, can assign different um, titles to people. These titles have small buffs on them. So it's kind of like a relic. You can't the the king or queen can take them away and and trade them out every two days. But they have small buffs. It's good. You know, just any any little bit helps, right? You also have fools. You can give these to. Uh, it, it's meant to give them to people that cause trouble, but in the end, people ask for them because they look kind of cool. Right. And, and same thing, they have debuffs, small debuffs. It's nothing that's really going to you know, <laughs> make you cry. It can slow you down a little bit or make it a little bit harder. I mean, the percentages are so low, it's not, it's not a big deal. Same thing on the, on the ninth side. The, uh, the percentages are so low, it's not going to make uh, an overwhelming difference for you. But the, the most important um, the, the most important rewards that you can get are, are none of those. The most important rewards you can get are actually these. These are um, kingdom-wide buffs that the king or queen can set off um, several times during the, uh, the two weeks. Uh, they line them up usually with the days, like the, um, the troop day is Friday night reset, right? Uh, you get 30% training buff, and you also there's also a 30% a, a reduction in the training cost. And, you know, healing, usually right after, so you can heal your troops. And you have the 300% also for the amount of troops power that you lost during the event. Right, so if you lose 100 million power during the event, um, when this buff is applied, it's 300% faster to train. So whereas it might take you two days to train, you know, your 2000 tier 12, um, now it'll take, you know, a third of that. So that's amazing, but only to the point that you train back the 200 million. That's the difference with this one. The other buffs here are for anyone without any um, power requirement or anything on them. So these are great. These are by far the most important uh, and the biggest reason you want to win um, is to, to actually have the ability to give these buff out, buffs out to everyone in the kingdom so that the whole kingdom can grow, right? right. Again, if you lose, um, if you if you don't win your Avalon after the event, um, and the, you know the sides are everything's decided, um, you'll get that three hundred percent buff for everybody immediately, so that you can recover. But that's all you get. You won't have the ability to to do any of this, right? The the king can set the the kingdom message. They can set the flag for the kingdom. Um, here in 759, we have a, 
a rotation that we do between different alliances that that assist in the um, in KVK each time. So we have little rules that um, to kind of help us decide on who gets the the crown the next time. Okay, so let's look at strategy. So now let's talk about strategy. First, uh, the battle map. This is I'm, what I'm circling right now is the dark forest, right? If you are outside the forest, like Red F here, you cannot be attacked. So when the other kingdoms, um, castles come in, their players, they can't actually attack anyone that's out here. They can only attack anyone that's inside the forest, which includes your um, tiles. You know, if you put a encampment out here, they can attack it. Um, it also includes uh, if you're in a tower or if you're in Avalon, obviously. Uh, if you're, you know, garrisoning here or garrisoning there, they can attack those and kill your troops. But Outside the forest, you cannot be hit, so you're safe here. Okay. Also, the forest slows down troop movement. So it, it slows you down to about 25% of your normal march speed. So the first strategy that we'll talk about is the wall. So the wall is basically, you take farms or very small, low-level um, strongholds, and you put them in a circle around or a square around Avalon and you shield them the whole time so they can't be hit because they're shielded right they have a peace shield for the full full amount so you put two three four I've, you know I've seen all the way out to here and in, in other kingdoms um, you space them out so that no one can teleport between them or in front of them and then what happens is when the other kingdom comes in and they're, you know, they're big 44 or whatever lands, they have to land over here. They can't do it from here. So it slows them down by two or three minutes on their march. And it gives you time. If you're in another kingdom trying to take um, another throne and your home base, your home team tells you, hey, I need some help. It gives you time to get back and adjust the troops that you have in your Avalon or in your towers to help you defend. It's really important to do that. You don't want someone to land right here and, you know, set up a mega rally and it's a five minute march to here or it would be a 10 or 15 march minute march from here. Right. Basic. All right. The next thing we can talk about is kind of what you need to, to do, just the basics to win. So let's say it's your crown event. So the crown event you have two of them before you have the uh, the kingdom versus kingdom. So when you on a new um, kingdom for your first, I think it's 65 days, um, nothing happens, right? You're just growing. After that, you actually have an event where you can come here and basically it's you fighting against your alliance, fighting against other alliances to take the throne. Hopefully by then you've already done most of your fighting. There's no big civil wars like I've seen on some kingdoms. And you can come in here and you have, you join into one alliance. You get, you know, some people on the, the throne, which is here in the middle, right? And in each of the towers. The reason that you want to do the towers is, you know, as, as I said before, you have to be in Avalon con for a consecutive eight hours. So if you get knocked off, the timer resets. Consecutive eight hours. In addition, you need to be in those towers because as you can see, each of them has a different little um, debuff. We call it a zap, like a lightning bolt. So what happens is every four minutes, if your alliance is not holding the tower, not garrisoned in the tower, it will zap the people that are in Avalon which will permanently kill, not wound, not sanctum, permanently kill a, a percentage of the troops that are in Avalon. So it's critical 
that you not only hold Avalon for the eight hours, but you also hold most, if not all, of the towers. The more towers that you don't hold, the harder the zaps. So you get, you know, it, maybe this is 100k power you lose every four minutes, then another 100k, and then another 100k, and then another 100k, and it adds up really quick, and then you're all dead. You don't want that to happen. So you have to plan to hold these guys and hold the throne. So in your crown event, hopefully you've worked out some deal. You send a person to each one of these towers, and you send you know a few people to the to Avalon, and you sit and you hold it. Well, what happens is in Kingdom versus Kingdom, you don't know your opponents to the last minute. One of the big strategies is to fly in as quick as you can with your highest stat person and just race to the to Avalon. So having that wall will prevent people from getting over there quickly and and if they do the next thing that we need to talk about is your rally or your marches, right, in general. And I'm going to assume for this video that everybody has at least someone that has T12 troops. So what you need is tier 12 infantry, cavalry, and bowmen, tier 11 cavalry, tier 11 bow, and tier 9 bow. So on an attack, you want your bow to be high, you want your infantry to be medium, and you want your cavalry to be medium. So if you have a million troops in the rally, you want, you know, 45% of that to be bow. You're going to want, you know, 35% of that to be infantry. And you're going to want the rest to be in your cavalry. That, for right now, that is the best make up the best uh, march that you can do as a group or as an individual even on offense and that's a crit march so you, you get the person that has the best stats and the best crit you have them do a mega rally and everybody else joins only sending the troops that are in that march that I just discussed and then it's on the screen alright so Let's say KVK Burton is the one that I want to knock off the uh, off Avalon. So I set my mega rally. I, you know, everybody puts the right troops in. We go in, bam, we hit it. Woo! -hoo! We take Avalon. The next thing that you're going to need to do is switch out to a defensive march. So you're not going to do it all at once, right? You're going to send, you're going to say, all right, let's go from the bottom and let's go one at a time. You know, um, Heretic, you get out and then you add your defensive march back in because those are the troops that we need. Or, hey, Heretic, you're, you know, your, def your offensive troops that you have in there are all T12 and that's what we need for, for our um, defensive march anyway, so you leave it how it is. So on the defensive march... You need Tier 12 Infantry, Tier 12 Bow, Tier 11 Infantry, Tier 11 Bow, Tier 10 Infantry, and Tier 9 Bow. So High Infantry, you're going to want 60% Infantry and 40% Bow, with your higher tiers being the higher amounts. You're not going to, don't spreadsheet it and go crazy with the math and everything and confuse everybody. Make it easy. Tell people to go take a look at the marches. If you have a lot of really low level, um, low tier players sending, you know, filling up your, your march with your tier nine bows um, to the detriment of the overall, then adjust it. You know, work with your team, adjust it so that your your higher tiers have the most number of troops compared to the lower. Pretty easy, right? So how can you play 
without being zeroed. Like I said, you cannot be hit. Your castle cannot be hit if you're not in the forest. So this, this edge, by the way, is the forest. You need to be outside the square. You need to be... You need to be over here to not get hit. If you're right here, you're going to get hit. Okay? If you're in a tower, or if you're in Avalon, you need to stay aware. It's a very, very long event. But you're going to, if you're in a tower, <laughs> or if you're in Avalon, you need to stay aware. Doesn't mean you have to stare at your phone or, you know, your computer or whatever, the whole event. But you're going to have to have a way to stay informed so that you can jump in, you know, notifications on your phone or whatever. So if, he, if someone's marching against it, that you can get in and, and you know, adjust and be ready for it. <clears throat> so you're going to have to communicate with your team also. If you can't win a battle, um, if you have, let's say, <clears throat> someone with their highest level troops is tier 10 in a tower, and you see a 42 pop up with a billion power and they start marching against the tower, don't take the hit. Don't be stupid. Get out. Live to fight another day. Same thing goes with your Avalon. It's happened to us. You, it, it's happened to us several times. You get into KVK and you're super confident. You start off, um, you, you jump on your Avalon. Then a, you see another uh, kingdom show up with 27, um, you know, 41 um, stronghold, level stronghold um, castles pile up around your forest and they immediately start mega rallying over and over and over your your Avalon. Know when, yeah, today's not just, just not your day. It's time to go ahead and back off and, you know, save as many troops as you can, build up and just be prepared for the next time. The good thing is if you lose, your ranking, your pairing should be a little bit easier the next time. So I know it's kind of a, a, a chicken way to, uh, to think about it, but don't don't lose all your power in an event that there's no way you're going to win. <clears throat> so another tip, another trick you can use, if you're not the person who's the mega, the mega rally or the mega garrison leader, use wounded capacity gear. It's really easy to get off of the marketplace. Um, also, any hospital capacity armor that you have, wear that. You could also, if you have a little bit of extra gold, you can talent spec for hospital capacity to reduce the, uh, the losses the most, right? So if you do get hit, uh, or if you're on a march and you're, you sent your, your tier 9, your tier 11 um, to, this, to this march, Use those, switch out your gear, because your stats won't matter in the Mega. Um, switch out your gear to make it easier for you to recover if you do lose. Or, you know, if you win, some troops might be lost, and it'll be easier for you to get them back. Also, save this and use this, you know, at the, the best time, your life preserver. That's 30% of what would be killed troops. Um, that actually become wounded, so that's extremely useful to use. You're only going to be able to use it once during uh, your excursion event, so use it at the right time. If you do lose troops, remember, um, no matter win or lose, uh, the 300% buff will come into place so that, that you can actually uh, recover your troops You know, by training new ones. Um, a lot faster. So again, the difference between the towers and Avalon is the towers are the ones that zap the people in here. But Avalon is what you need to own. Avalon is what you need to control. It's the ultimate prize. So let's go over a few winning strategies. 
the strategies will depend on the composition of your actual kingdom and the people that are participating. If you only have one high stat, you know, your big spender, if you have one, then what I would recommend is you take your five strongest players other than that person, right? So your five other next strongest players. What you would do is you take your next strongest player, you put them on to Avalon, and you have the other th the other three go ahead and, and make sure that they're in Avalon as well. You take your strongest player and have them be a, uh, a floater. And so their main purpose is to clear out the enemy from towers. And then everyone else that you have they only send, I mean, other than filling up Avalon, you want to make sure that that rally is, that garrison is completely full. You want everybody else to send a very small amount of troops to the towers. And we do this so that, you know, they don't take, uh, because you don't have a lot of uh, high stat people, so the chances are you're going to lose some towers you have your other players send maybe 500 troops or a thousand troops to each of the towers um, and then you have and then many people can do that right so that they're all getting points and you have your floater your high stat person there to either jump in and garrison a tower that's going to be hit jump in and garrison avalon if it if a mega rally it comes up against it or knock people off of towers if they come in and take it so that, that's one. You definitely want to have the, the row, the blockers out there, the wall of the, the stronghold farms that are, that are uh, shielded. So if you have... And, and the other thing that you could do from the very beginning is put your strongest player on Avalon, have them set the, the mega garrison fill it up and then still do the 500 troop thing and then just hope that you're able to hold off anyone that comes by spamming you know if there's a lot of them you're kind of SOL but if there's one or two people that come and they start messing with your towers um, they can only take two of them and what they'll do is they'll come in for points they'll hit a tower they'll take their troops off to hit another tower take their troops off and they'll just do that for points make sure you're not taking a lot of your, your players aren't taking a lot of damage, a lot of troop loss, um, but uh, just spam those towers with 500. So as they pull, you already have 500 going there, so that you reduce, the, you minimize the number of zaps that the Avalon takes. So if you have multiple high stat, high level players in your kingdom, what you can do and what we've done is you put your second or third or fourth uh, strongest player on Avalon, you fill it up um, with your defensive march, you, you take your 500 troops on each of the towers right at the beginning, you take your strongest one, two, three players, you take them to, the, to another kingdom. Unfortunately, it's a guess, right? So at the beginning, you don't know which of your other two opponents is the weakest. But, you know, you roll the dice, 50-50 chance, you go to the other kingdom, you immediately port over to their forest, and you try to get that Avalon before they can get on it, and you have your offensive team, you know, you divide up between a home team and an away team. Your away team, they go, they take that other Avalon as quickly as possible, and they fill it up, and they do the same thing. They put 500 on each of the towers or it depends on how many people you have. If you can actually fill those and hold them, that's best um, using defensive, the same defensive crit march that we talked about earlier. That's another um, strategy that you can use that's, that wins. So another thing that you can do, and we really haven't done this in this kingdom, but I've done it in other kingdoms, is you win without losing any troops at all. So as soon as the event begins, you have someone create a group, uh, create a channel, um, a private channel, you invite the big players from one of those other kingdoms or both of those other kingdoms and you say, hey guys, listen, let's just hold our own this time. Can we make a deal? You know, we'll trade you 
Um, you know, a few hits, we'll put our farms out in the forest, and you kill them so you can get your points. Um, you know, we'll trade, we'll put some encampments out, and you guys can hit them, and we'll hit some of yours, and we'll just trade points, and everybody will get all the rewards that you need, and we'll all hold our kingdoms, and everybody will be happy at the end. It happens. Um, again, we haven't, we haven't done that here yet. So, again, I, I hope that uh, this, this guide helps. I hope that your kingdoms can use it. I hope that it, it helps you um, in all of your battles except against 759. If your kingdom actually is, uh, you know, gets us as part of your pairing, um, first, you know, hide. Um, second, maybe set up a group and, and add me or Anari or DMT or somebody to it and, you know, see if, if we'll uh, work with you. We usually would um, to, you know, minimize losses. Uh, you know, just for, or just forget everything that you got out of this video um, and just wing it. Uh, if you do face us, um, that's what I would suggest. Um, other than that, have a great week, and good luck with your KVK this weekend. Goodbye.